It's the week before Christmas. I've finished all my jobs, well, bar a couple which are postponed to January, but we're not going to that now. And I've got a little bit of spare time before the Christmas shenanigans start proper in the house. So what I want to do is experiment a little bit with my CNC. I know on YouTube that these catch-all trays seem to be very popular. I've no idea whether they're going to be popular at the craft fairs that I go to or not, but I want to have a crack at making them. And I want to make some various different shapes. I don't want to stay with a, a boring old bowl. I want to play around a little bit. So this video is about experimenting with the software. I'm going to run through the software fairly quickly. So if you want to see exactly what I've done, use the pause button primarily because I don't want to bore you to death with looking at a piece of software all through the video. So let's crack on and see what we can come up with. Okay, so I've got the software open. I've made a new file and I've put the sizes in for my job, 200 mil wide, 600 mil long, which is the max length I can accommodate and 29 mil thick. I've got my Z set, XY datum set, and I'm using standard resolution. I'm gonna start with a fairly basic tray. So I'm just going for a rectangle, set my rectangle eight mil in, 140 184 mil wide i'll explain that 100 mil deep and i'm going for 50 mil curve so i get this nice oval shape the reason that i've come in this little bit is that i'm using a six mil bit to cut and i don't want that six mil bit to go past the size of the job the workpiece and cut into my fence which you'll see later on in the vid the other thing i need to say is i don't have a ball and tray bit i'm going to be using a six mil ball end bit ball nose bit to give me that internal corner so to make allowances for that i'm going to use the offset tool i'm going to draw my wall thickness at six mil and then i'm going to reselect the inner size of the wall and put another offset at three mil in now that inner offset i'm going to use as the boundary for the flat end mill that i'm going to use to clear the bulk of the waste off so this is going to be a pocket cart and that's the bit i'm going to use it's just a quarter inch six mil end bit sorry flat end mill i'm going to cut down uh 23 mil my workpiece is 29 mil i'm going to finish the cut off with the um with a bandsaw and a template bit on the router table so i've got 23 mil down got my bit selected eight passes that's 2.8 mil a pass which i think is a little bit much so i'm going to drop that to 2.3 mil a pass i'm using raster for the car and i'm going to have a profile pass on the last pass so let's calculate that looks okay now for this inner wall this is going to be a profile car Again, I want a 23 mil depth of cart. And I want quarter inch bullnose bit. I'm going to leave all the defaults. Happy with them. 12 passes. Happy with that. This needs to cut on the inside of this line. Don't need anything else. Calculate that. preview the toolpath cool and I've got my little curve on the corner looks good so the last thing I need to do is to cut the outside profile and um, once again profile toolpath need to change that back to the 46438 eight passes little bit much we'll go for 10 at 2.3 mil this is going to cut on the outside everything else it's cool i'm just going to rename this to outside profile calculate play and that looks pretty good so there's my first tray. So I've run the first one through just to prove the theory and the approach. And the three mil offset works out really well. I've got a tiny, tiny ridge there, 
but nothing that a little piece of sandpaper won't take out. And I've also got some step over marks here, but again, nothing that a very quick rub with a piece of sandpaper won't take out. I've finished the cut off on the uh, bandsaw, cut off the waist, and then trimmed it off with um, template bit on the router table, which again was really quick. So I'm happy with the approach. What I want to do now is just get a little bit more creative with the design. I've made another new file. I've set my job sizes to 200 by 200. Again, 29 mil thick, Z0 material surface, XY date on bottom left hand corner, standard resolution. So what I want to achieve with this one is something akin to a leather catch all tray. So something akin to this kind of design. So in order to do this, I'm not going to attempt any freehand drawing because I'm rubbish at it. So I'm going to use squares, rectangles and ellipses. So I'm going to start with a square. I'm going to come up 20 by 20 from the X, Y and I'm going to make it 160 by 160 with no rounded corners. And then I'm going to make another square with rounded corners 30 by 40. So that 30 by 40 square, I'm going to move that, drop it in the corner, then rotate it by 45 degrees. And then I'm going to use that as my little pinched bit of leather that sticks out at the top. So I need to duplicate that to keep it the same on all four corners. So I'll have that one for there and then I'll flip on the bottom for that one and flip on the left for that one so that gives me my four little pinched bits now I want a curve to go in between them so I'm going to draw an ellipse I'm not going to draw it there I'm going to draw it from here and I want that to be about there-ish, I think. Let's try something like that to start. Let's move that up. I'm just trying to imagine what it's going to look like. I think it's a bit short. So let's make that a bit longer bring it up a little bit more that looks a lot better so I'm quite happy with that I think that looks really good there by the rectangle and there'll be a nice inward sweep there to simulate the leather well sagging a little bit I suppose so I'm going to copy that now or duplicate it so that I can get it over here in exactly the same place which will be there and again I'm just lining it up on the overlap on the rectangle vector and then let's do another copy and then we'll rotate that to 90 degrees and we'll drop that up the top Keep that line and then we'll copy that and we'll drag that down to the bottom. That's the shape. Doesn't look much like a leather catch-all tray at the moment does it but now we're going to use the node editor to cut it all up and get rid of the bits that we don't want so I'll show you on one corner and then I'll just fast forward through the rest so I'm going to select this knowing that I want to keep the outer bit and then I'll go into node edit mode I'm looking for where the two cross there and I'll cut that and then over here and I'll cut that and then if I choose that inner bit 
and I can see it's only that bit that's there so I've cut them successfully hit delete on the keyboard now I'll do the same on these I'll cut that there I'll cut that there I have to scoot over to the other corner and cut that one there and I want to lose the outside bit which is already selected so again delete on the keyboard I'll do the same down here Cut, select, delete, and there's my shape. So I'll replicate that on the other four a sec, and then we can do the tool path. Now I can get rid of the square, and there's my shape. It'll look better in a sec. So now I need to join all my vectors together. So I'll select the two, choose join move endpoints looks fine so let's see if we've got any open vectors no open vectors cool we're all closed up so now I need to make my wall and again I'll use the offset tool so I want my wall thickness at 6mm and I want to come 6mm inside that vector and then again I'll come in 3 mil inside that second vector so that I can make the little roundy corner with the bull nose bit excellent so now for toolpaths so I'll go profile toolpath first and I've got the outside to do again 23 mil because my bit will cut 25 but I don't want to push it too close I'm going on the outside all looks good so let's name this outside profile fabulous so now for the pocket cut spiral bit is fine 23 mil down Two point eight mil in a pass. I think two point three is more than enough for that bit. Master cut profile on the last cut on the last pass. Call this main pocket. Finally, I want to do a profile pass with my ball nose bit. 23 more down. 1.6 is more than enough. I don't overload the bit. I'm going on the inside. everything else looks good let's call this in our profile beautiful okay let's run that up and see what it looks like Well, this has come out really, really well. I expect you noticed the 
piece moving up and down. I should have rechecked the clamps before I did that last profile cut, but I've kind of got away with it. It's left me with a little ridge there again. So a little piece of sandpaper required, but from a perspective of playing around with the software and making shapes, I think I'm really pleased with that. It's kind of funky, isn't it? I'm not sure it actually looks like the pinched leather, but I like it. So I might go with a few of them for the craft fair. This one I really like as well. It's attractive in its simplicity, I think. Maybe they'll go as a pair. Who knows? Anyway, so on to the next. But I think I'm going to have to put that in a part two because this video has got too long. So I'll put the link on the screen when this one finishes. Don't go away. More funky designs coming. Thanks for watching. Ta-ra.